Hello, the Internet. It's Jack O'Brien, the founder and former editor-in-chief of Crack.com and the host of the new comedic news podcast, The Daily Zeitgeist, which, as the name suggests, is daily and sporadically in German. If you like Cracked, How Stuff Works podcasts, and want to get your news from some of the smartest and funniest comedic and journalistic minds around, well then, this show is going to make you all over the place. Yeah, I don't think we can use that. Sure we can. Go to Apple Podcasts to listen and subscribe. Don Lebatard. Stugatz is kind of morally bankrupt. Stugatz. That's fair. This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Guests on the Dan Lebatard Show appear via the Shell Pennzoil performance line. Here's your Sports Center update. Tennessee has parted ways with Athletic Director John Curry. Miami Heat Center Hassan Whiteside has a left knee bone bruise and will miss the next one to two weeks as he undergoes a strength and conditioning program, according to the team. And finally, Larry Bird has been named Best Picture by the New York Film Critics Circle. Congratulations, Larry. For all the latest headlines and information, tune in the Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. All right, this is the worst part of the week for all of us here. Uh, Amin El Hassan last night in crushing fashion. Oh. Amin El Hassan went to the grid of death. And listen to this. Just before we get started here, the Grim Reaper is here. We do a suicide type pool every week. Uh, on the football games in the NFL, and if we lose, there's just bad stuff left. We got off easy last week, and now Amin El Hassan. It is all bad, but we are towards the end of a grid here where it's the absolute worst of the Well, worst. right. All of us feel this costume. If you don't know what we're talking about, Zardo, Sean Connery, 70s. It's leather boots and like uh, just very, very little clothing. And all of us are afraid of it because of how ridiculous it looks. Whoever gets this is going to have to have a long ponytail, red suspenders, a red speedo, and thigh high suede boots. Right. So that's where we are with this. And every, nobody wants to do this. But Amin Al Hassan last night, put, he pulled yesterday on the show, he pulled the Bulls. The Bulls were at the Nuggets. The Nuggets were 11 point favorite. Okay. So Amin Al Hassan, in order not to get to one of these awful penalties that are left on the board, Amin Al Hassan, I think he, he's already talking about. Choosing a hissing cockroach across his face. Yep. Yep. A hissing cockroach. In his mind, that's the best of what's remaining. That's the best of what's remaining. Uh, But here's the end of this game. He's got the Bulls at the Nuggets. The Bulls are an 11-point dog. The Bulls have been winning all game. Here's the end. Nuggets are down by one. Will Barton across the timeline. Six seconds. Goes right to the rack. Reverse layup. Good! Denver's in the lead by one. 3.2 left. No timeouts. Valentine at the half court line. Didn't get the shot off. And the Nuggets survive. That is uh, the Nuggets radio <laughs> <Yes>. network. <laughs> so Amin goes down, and now the rest of us have to go to this godforsaken bucket. There's nothing good in it. It's an assortment of helmets, an assortment of riding on helmets that Mike only is the only one who knows the rules to him. Everyone but me. Golden helmet of life. Yes. My last week so off. God says three weeks. He was asking yesterday. This is my third week. He was trying to make it his first week again. He was trying to. <laughs> he, he was hoping for an accounting was, error. Yeah. You're rooting for a really bloody week this week. I need one, yes. Yeah. What yes. do we do with Roy? Roy had a baby. Uh, want me to pick for Roy? Yeah, pick for Roy? That's fine. You don't well, want to give him a buy? No, okay. well, I'm down on Roy right now because Roy had a baby, and congratulations to Roy Bellamy. We're all very happy. But he just vanished. Right. He just disappeared from Got one it. day to the next, and everybody was like, are you okay? Are you alive? Is everything all right? And all of his work just got all stacked up, even though people have been telling him for three months, hey, you got a baby coming, including his wife. His wife was wandering around the house. She was pregnant all the time. Right. You got a baby coming. You're going to need to get those work done before the water breaks. You would have thought he knew. And No, he you know, didn't do anything. Just disappeared. Nobody's heard from him for days. I've got one word text responses. He's good. Yeah. That's an actual quote. All right. Yeah, yeah. Great. All, All right. right. So I'm picking for him. Yeah, yes, so no buy. He'll uh, deal with the consequences. Okay. No buy for Roy. No buys on this, man. Come All on. right. So now Chris is going to go to the bucket of death. Here it is right now. The Grim Reaper is in position. He is reaching into the bucket right now. A helmet will be withdrawn. Is that the Cardinals? Titans. The Titans. Ooh. The Titans, Titans. are seven-point favorite at home against That's the good. Texans. That's good. Seven point. They're not a very good team. They're but playing for a playoff spot. I'll keep it. Yeah. Their point differential stinks. You're going up against Tom da- uh, Tom Savage. Yeah. 
That's a good. Uh, that's a good keep. Have the Titans been outscored this season? Have the Titans scored oh, fewer points with, with than the point differential? <laughs> all right, this is all. This is about survival. All right, understood. Uh, I mean, hey, I'm just making the arguments for the listener. I'm not. I'm making the arguments for the listener. I'm not trying to persuade you into anything. Titans are seven and four minus twenty seven. <laughs> good luck, uh, uh, <laughs> Guillermo. I mean, yeah, you've got to feel good about it. It's Tom Savage. Like right, right. Guillermo's now reaching into the bucket. The Texans are minus two. Four and seven. The Texans are slightly better. <laughs> Golden helmet of life? No? No, Jaguars. Oh, <laughs> oh man. I saw the two, gold. No, yes, yes. Golden helmet of life. <laughs> <laughs> Don't follow the, up on that. The Jags, nine and a half point favorite at home one. against the Colts. I'm going to keep this. Yeah. Man, I need blood this good. week. Let's go. Oh, I saw so much gold there. I was excited. Billy, did you? Billy's got seven losses this season. Like, every time Billy goes into that bucket, he contracts leprosy. Like, it's amazing. I'm uh, six and six, and I got three wins two weeks ago just by picking the golden helmet. That's right. You've had a bad year. <laughs> Remember, the uh, there's a double death helmet and also the fine bucket uh, helmet, which was pulled last week, and Chris got uh, $750 out of it. It carries automatic death, but you do get all $4 that are in the fine bucket for this week. <laughs> all right, let's go. What? $4. I owe a couple of bucks from yesterday. I think it's $6. Mike Ryan is reaching Seven. into the bucket right now. Golden helmet of life! Oh, the golden wow. helmet of life! Wow. Go play the, play the sound, do your fun. job instead of celebrating it. Play the sound nice of job. golden helmet of life! Life. That guarantees you avoid Zardos, man. Pretty much. Good job unless I you. get the swap. Oh, no! Or, or, or unless Roy does. I don't have a glove, though. Just okay. You know. okay, hang on. Hang on. Oh, gotcha. Really? One of the, these disease written gloves? Here, I'll pick first. Come over here yeah. while you're getting Stugat's a glove. Oh no! I no, bad helmets, I feel man. double Let's death go. coming. Oh, a helmet with writing on it. Mm. I can't even read what this says. Let me see. Parlay, right? Parlay. That's the parlay helmet. There he is. The rule maker drifts from the room. You can't parlay the Thursday night winner. All right, I'll do the parlay. I'll figure out what the teams are in a second. You got to pick two straight up winners. They both must win. Uh, or not lose, because draws are safe. I'm going to draw again just to show you what I would have gotten if I hadn't stuck with the parlay. What would I have gotten? Oh, any team. I would have gotten any team. Ooh. So you just would have needed one team to That's win. Right. That's right. Made it twice as hard as I needed to make it. Although no. you would have had the red, uh, you would have had the, the Cowboys, so you would have been safe. I'm going to outsource this to people. What what two teams should Dan pick this year? Put it on the poll, Guillermo. This week. This, this week. week, rather. What two teams should Dan pick this week? You're sticking by at, that? At Levitard. Is it a fine? Yeah, yeah, I'm sticking by it. By the results of what they say? No, I'm not sticking by that. No, I just, I'm curious. Did you I put am... your helmet back in the bucket? I think Because that's controversy right there. All right, go ahead and pick. Well, I'm rummaging for Roy. I'm rummaging. Yeah, rummaging. Yeah, rummaging. I like to rummage around the bucket. It, it's null if he picks the same helmet. Dan Roy likes to rummage. Hold on a second. It's null if he picks the same helmet. Go ahead. All right, hold on a second. I know, right? Don't talk, Grit Reaper. $2. He got, uh... Stu, you got. Stu, you got. How you doing this year? Terrible. It's well, the, Stu Gatz is the games that Stu Gatz picks every week against the spread. He's well under 500. Yeah. So we're going to put it back for Roy? Why? I mean, I want to keep. Well, I don't know. No, I don't know what to back. do. Put it back. Right, put right, it right. back. This is one more chance for a swap. I'm not, I'm not down with this. <laughs> I know, really? I, I, I didn't notice that at all with your why. <laughs> your why. why? <laughs> your why. You're asking for follow up questions. Pull the swap. Pull the swap for Roy so he can have a baby and the golden helmet of life. Oh. Sorry, guys. Uh, Roy has the uh, Minnesota Vikings. All right. So the, the Vikings are on the road at the Falcons. They're a three-point dog. Oh, a tough one. Oof. Yes. Oof. Uh, okay. Thank you, Grim Reaper. Another $2 from the Grim Reaper because you spent time talking. Again, I don't understand why you don't understand that you're not allowed to talk. You're wearing a mask, and you're supposed to be representing death. Thank you. Don't speak again. Thank you. <laughs> payday. Payday. Just, it is payday. I don't payday. understand why the Grim Reaper's chatty. I don't get it either, man. I uh, don't forget you owe $7, by the way. What do I owe $7 Well, again? you owe 6 from yesterday, and you just got fined during this segment. You said uh, season instead of this week. You said year. You yeah. Said week. That's yeah. not a bad mistake. It is. Well, it's a mistake. It's a fine. Protect, $7. That, protect your home inside and out by installing Blink cameras in and around your house. Protect your family and know who's coming up to your front door. Tell them, God. Yep, I love Blink. Blinks are small video cams you install yourself inside and out. Guys, I have them all over my house, inside and outside the house. Each one took me less than 10 minutes to install. If I could do it, anyone could do it. They are wire-free and run on two batteries that last two years. Blinks are motion-activated. They're always on duty. The instant Blink detects something, you get a video alert on your smartphone 
Blink helps stop crime before it happens. Order now and get three Blink cams, what the other guys charge for one, plus an extra 10% off. It's a great deal. Go to BlinkProtect.com slash Dan. That's BlinkProtect.com slash Dan. This is what a mind bleep this league is. Do I want to select for my parlay the Raiders? I'm going up against the Giants and Geno Smith, but I don't know. It was like this week, the week we had when we didn't know whether to take the Bills or not because we didn't know what the hell Nathan Peterman was going to give them. Right. Who the hell am I going to pick? I, I picked the Chargers against the Browns, but if I pick the Chargers against the Browns, the Browns' only victory last season was against the Chargers. And remember, Josh Gordon is starting uh, this right. week. Right, I'm scared of Brown. everything. And we've How? never seen him sober. I am scared of everything. What are the two teams that you would pick if you were me? Uh, Raiders and Chargers would be the two that I go with. The Jags, really? the Jags are a nine-and-a-half-point favorite against the Colts and Pagano. I like the idea of betting against Pagano. How about the Rams at the Cardinals? Do you like the Rams at the Cardinals? Ah, Blaine Gabbert, not terrible. <laughs> Don Lebertard. How would we flesh out a little bit the first question? Let's flush. Is it flush or flesh? It's flushing out. Roy, I think it's you're flush. wrong. It's flush. It's Roy. flush. <laughs> Stugatz. Roy, you could have risen up here and just taken Mike's job forever, and you are doing nothing but going up there, not just merely swinging and missing. You're going up to the batter's box with no bat. Sorry to disappoint you, Dan. You're Wally Poop. This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. If you missed any of the show, you can listen to all three hours of the Dan Lebatar Show on demand in the ESPN app, plus our Miami Only Hour that airs before the show, and now you can subscribe to our Best of Podcast. It's all available in the Listen tab of the ESPN app. Dan, it is time to pump the brakes. Can the people saying that Josh Gordon does not deserve to be playing this Sunday in the NFL, can you pump the brakes? Yes, he has made some mistakes. He has paid dearly for those mistakes. He has worked hard to get himself back to a place mentally and physically where he is able to play in the NFL. And I, for one, am rooting for Josh Gordon to have a big game on Sunday and a long career in the NFL. I mean, those of you out there, insensitive. Josh Gordon doesn't deserve to be playing in the NFL. Give me a break. He's paid the price, and now he gets a fifth opportunity to prove himself in the NFL. (laughs) And I'm okay with that. That's what America's all about. Opportunity after opportunity after opportunity after opportunity after opportunity. And now he has another opportunity. And pump the brakes. If you don't like it, too bad. It is brought to you by Advanced Auto Parts. Whether you're looking to change your air filter or replace your brakes, you'll find the parts you need and knowledgeable team members ready to help at Advanced Auto Parts. Advanced Auto Parts, let's get you back on the road. I want to sincerely thank all of you who have suggested my Browns-Giants parlay. (laughs) Uh, I want to thank the rest of you who have written in saying that, Mike Ryan, uh, while the golden helmet of life is in use by somebody else, it shouldn't be in the... It shouldn't be in the bucket. I'm pretty certain that was a rule. Well, now no, that Mike... Not. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's not a rule. You mean oh, now you, it's not? Oh, you guys would like that rule, yes? <laughs> yeah. You, you guys want that rule? Um, hey, here we go again. Here we go again. Yeah, he's actually, start, I do. He's going to yeah. start snapping at everybody. <laughs> this thing is such a mess. I'm telling you, this thing is a poison. The thing, If you want to see how t- locker rooms fall apart... Just listen to that bucket of death segment because Guillermo was yelling in the background, put it back when Mike selected it, and nobody was happy for Mike Ryan. It was like watching Terrell Owens catch touchdowns. Right. Nobody was happy for Mike Ryan when he got the golden helmet of life. Whenever there are disputes that relate to me, we call Sarah Spain, and they usually result in bad things, worse things for me. Uh, notice how Mike doesn't want to call Sarah for ruling oh, on this. but I, that's I'm, interesting. I, I'm guessing if we did that Sarah would rule in favor of Mike, and somehow I'd be doing something <laughs> ridiculous. Well, what you're doing, you're trying to change the ruling because it's I always think, been you. You've always been allowed I don't, to. Pull I don't know the, what the rule is. You've no. always been allowed to pull the golden helmet of life. You've always been time. allowed to make the rules. Is what's happened. That's yes. the only always okay, we've had. Okay. Well, you know here. what? That's still the case. <laughs> and that rule. So still should we call Sarah? Put her on the pole, gear. Are you kidding me, get, Sarah? Get the as, hell out as, of here. Should we call Sarah about get the golden helmet of, of life to change a rule when something <laughs> good happens to me? Get out. I don't. Well, I don't know if we're changing the rule. I think you might have been pointing out the rule of someone else. Everyone's unclear on the rule. I mean, <laughs> Sarah also ruled that Roy was immune this week, but we kind of ignored that Oh, ruling. did she? Yeah. Okay, so he's Twitter. immune this week. I didn't realize Because now people on Twitter are asking her for rulings, so, and okay. she gives them. Well, let's okay. see what she well, rules. I was, uh, I was unaware of that Sarah ruling, um, but uh, yeah, that's really messed up that Dan did that. Mm-hmm. 
Um, I mean, the thing's a poison. There's no disputing it. Like, it brings no joy to anybody in here. No, and, we, we, and, we have legit tension. No, yes, it's awful. Yes. It's awful. Nobody, nobody likes it. Um, I wanted to get into a handful of things here that are going on, <laughs> that are going on with, uh, with the Giants and Giancarlo Stanton, Stugatz. Like, okay. this is a crazy situation where you've got the National League MVP. Here's the backstory for those of you who don't know. The Miami Marlins were owned by a very unpopular man, and Derek Jeter has come in here, and he has done an assortment of things that very quickly, what was supposed to be a rejoicing in Miami, people have realized that Derek Jeter is starting out in a worse place than the previous owner because he's not spending and he keeps botching things. And You keep hearing all sorts of stories around the Marlins where he doesn't know what he's doing. He has, um, you know, because, and how could he, right? Because it's, he's totally new in the job. Never done it. And that he's surrounded by people that it's just, it's different. It's difficult for anybody with the Marlins to even get close to him. Right. Like it's just, he's just surrounded by people. And so he's running the, he's negotiated this deal where he's gotten a baseball team because he's Derek Jeter. The money is low. And they just, they, baseball, like I would love to see an investigation of everything that happened there to see how baseball just gave that team to Derek Jeter because they wanted Derek Jeter to have a team. Derek Jeter doesn't have the money to do this. If his name's not Derek Jeter, I wonder if he does have, if that person does have a team. Derek, make, it, make it Paul O'Neill. I don't think I, he has I, a team. <laughs> well, there are a number of things that have happened here that have made it so that Derek Jeter is in a position where he is losing some of his golden PR Sheen in Miami. Why would Major League Baseball allow this? They got Loria out of there. You got you finally have a market excited because they're going to get new hope with a new owner, and you do a Loria Redux. Well, they just wanted someone in there with a name. There was a Cuban owner here in Miami who had bigger pockets and was said that he was going to spend, and he never got into the game. And furthermore, the asking price on that franchise was just crazy. Right, so I I think I think Jeter got burned even there. You're buying land too, though, right? You're buying that stadium. You're buying. The oh, you're buying lots, a business. You're buying, you're buying a business. You're buying a business, and they will make money. But that doesn't mean they'll they'll run their baseball team well. Right. Um, and they're going to now slash payroll again, which means that John Carlos Stanton has a no trade clause. But the choice right now from the Marlins is, hey, John Carlo, you need to waive that and go where we want you to go, or. We're going to have you as our only player next year, and you're going to play with a bunch of rookies. You're going to play with a bunch of minimum wage guys. So they are trying to threaten him on a, a contractually earned no trade clause that had to be put in in an unprecedented fashion by the Marlins because of how little anyone trusted the previous ownership. Correct. To keep anyone. They're so, essentially saying you're going or everyone else is going. But this one's interesting right now because we saw this with Carmelo Anthony and the no trade clause. Very few players in basketball have no trade clauses. Giancarlo Stanton is in a situation where he doesn't want to go to San Francisco. He wants to go to Los Angeles or New York. Right. He doesn't want to go to San Francisco. He's got a no-trade clause. But the Marlins and Derek Jeter, with a general manager in place that's from the previous regime, because Derek Jeter has fired everyone else except this one guy who made the previous mistakes and is still in charge as the general manager of the team, now they're have, the trade they want is from the Giants. That tra- they don't want the trade from the Yankees or the Dodgers. They want the trade from the Giants. And so now what do you do if you're Giancarlo Stanton? Hmm. Because they're trying, they're, do- they're doing this with the National League MVP. They are trying to start strong arm him on something that he contractually negotiated well, specifically because he didn't trust the people before these people. Are they looking at the Giants farm system and saying that's the, the farm system? No, the two, the, the three, it's the second baseman and two really top prospects. They like what they're getting from San Francisco. I don't know what the other offers are. That's not my point. Okay. My point is the player has the power and a contract clause. Right. And they're telling him, Man. we'll give you your money. But you will either play in Miami in an empty ballpark, surrounded by a bunch of guys on minimum wage. They're, they're, the pressure they're putting on him is like, you're going to be the reason we got a bad team. You're going to be our right fielder, but you're going to be the reason that we can't give you any help whatsoever. You're going to play but, with a minor league team, and it's going to be you out there in right I field. I think the fans down here know better and would side. Whatever fans the Marlins do have would side with John Carlos Stanton and not Derek Jeter in that situation. If I'm Stanton, I just wait and I go to the, I, I wait and force their hand. Train me to one of the places I want to go to. That's it. That's what I do. An interesting thing pointed out by John Morales, the local meteorologist down here, part of the reason they can't afford Stanton's $25 million next year, Wei Yin Chen and Edinson Volkas are making $31 million because of Michael Hill. 
the general manager that's still making these decisions. Who did you just credit for that information? John Morales. No, local what was hero? The, the no, weather. No, 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 no. Yeah. For the people who don't know who that is, I want you to again credit your source on that information. I just want this segment to end. This is how I want this segment to end, Guillermo. <laughs> Right before you pay $2 for your microphone contribution here, I want this segment to end with the description of the person that you reported that information from. So I want you to give me that information again, and I want the last words on this segment to be according to whatever factually accurate thing you can say. Another interesting fact about this, Dan, part of the reason they can't afford Stanton's $25 million is because they're paying Wei and Chen and Edison Volk as $31 million, a deal made by their current GM who they're keeping, that's courtesy of John Morales, local meteorologist. Don Lebatard. It's over, dog. It's over, dog. Stugats. Cavs by 15. Oh! This is the Don Lebatard show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. Watching highlights of last night's Cleveland Atlanta game. I keep expecting LeBron James to fall out of his prime. Nope. I keep waiting for LeBron James to fall out of his prime. He, I, there, he's playing so many minutes, and he's playing better than he ever has, and he just erased everyone at the end of that game against Atlanta. But this can't possibly become a, a Tom Brady situation where he goes to an impossible age where you keep waiting and waiting. The, the, Tom Brady can get by not being a physical specimen in his sport as long as he's smart and so has the arm. What what LeBron's doing? He's still the best best athlete on the court. There's well, no evidence that this human being is aging. That there's no evidence that this human being playing an unprecedented amount of minutes is showing anything in the way of deterioration. It's um it's absolutely amazing because you're right. He's never played better. When you look at his percentages from two and from three. One of the best seasons he's had in his career at the age of 32. What's he, gonna shooting? Be What's he shooting? Is he shooting 60% from? Is he he's shooting, shooting 60%? Fi- he's shooting 58%. He's shooting 42% from three. 42% from three is, is one of the league leaders. That would make 42% will put you among the league leaders. Dan, he's been above 40%. He's been at 40% once in his career. That part I don't get. He had one season where he couldn't shoot at all. He had, he had he one had, season recently in Cleveland where he couldn't shoot. 2015-16, he was uh, 30% from three. 30%. How do you explain that? I really don't. Like, that is, it's one of the most amazing things that we've ever seen. Let's update the polls here at Lebetard Show. Uh, we've got a ton of them today. We're going to open up the club 10 minutes from now. Uh, it feels like we've got way too many polls today. It feels like we have about 30 polls today. So let's just get... Uh, to as many as we can here, as fast as we can. At Lebetard Show on Twitter is how you vote on the polls. Basically what we do with this, it's a poll. All our sports polls make fun of the daily sports poll on sports radio. All of them are meant to be not really about sports, just sort of kind of tangentially ridiculous. And all of it is meant to be very scientific about explaining to you what it is that we've (laughs) talked about during the previous three and a half hours of show. The Twitter poll is brought to you by Upside.com, giving all business travelers the gift of a better travel experience this holiday season. Check them out today at Upside.com. Is it a hole-in-one if there is no one there to witness it other than yourself? 63% of the audience said yes, or said no, excuse me. They said no. Is it a hole-in-one if there is no one there to witness it other than yourself? 62% of the audience said no. Is it a hole-in-one if there is no one there to witness it other than yourself? 59% of the audience said no. Curious. Mm Mm-hmm. Is it a house money game? 76% of the audience said yes. Miami against Clemson. House money game for Miami. Not expected to do anything. Has Derek Jeter ever answered a question? 91% of the audience said no. Wow. It's funny. It's overwhelming. (laughs) <laughs> the 9% think, like, feel like he has? Like, I, don't, I would like to know the question that he's answered. Is A-Rod going to end up being more popular than, than Jeter? 69% of the audience said yes. Nice. It's amazing. How old is the person who says, look at me, I don't give a rip? That was Mike Ryan earlier in the show. He said, look at me while making an argument and then said, I don't give a rip. 68% of the audience said over 80. Is college football second only to porn? 
in terms of what we will put aside of our moralities just to get our pleasure? That's a great <laughs> question, man. 75% of the audience said yes. That's a good question. <laughs> yes. Do you have a wish list of 100 movies you're never going to get to? 51% of the audience said yes. It's that net. What is that thing? What is the, the queue? queue? I know, but what is that thing where you put something on a wish list, you don't want to watch it now, you intend to get to it, but not really. Right. You're going to put it aside for when you want to watch a movie, but you're almost never going to be in the mood to watch that movie. I've had milk on my DVR since 2011. Really? It's like favorites on Twitter. I'm telling you, I have 6,502. That's 6,502 things I'm never going to read. Are you interested in seeing where this Conor McGregor and Irish Mafia story goes? 71% of the audience said yes. What's more surprising? Stugatz falling asleep during Book of Mormon, Dan falling asleep during The Phantom of the Opera, or Mike falling asleep during O? 46% 46% of the audience said Mike. Mike was in Vegas, though, man. Would you be excited if Kirk Cousins was coming to your team? 63% of the audience said no. What's going on there? What, what's going on there is people know why. What? Kirk Cousins is just yeah, He's okay. got 75 touchdowns and, like, I don't know, 20-something interceptions the last three years. And a bunch of people voting are, you know, people who are voting that on a, for a team that has no quarterback. There are many good quarterbacks in the NFL. Well, no one agrees with you. No one agrees with you on Kirk Cousins. Stop arguing with me. All right. I'm arguing with a poll. What am I doing? (laughs) You're being Stugatz. Is there something about being in a theater that makes you want to fall asleep? 62% of the audience said yes. Are we making too many 30 for 30 spoofs? 63% of the audience said no. Did Tim uh, Tim Tebow want to say balls? He went with fortitude. That was clear. Like that was so obvious. He went with fortitude. He was he was mad, jacked up. He was on first take and he was yelling about he was yelling. Tim Tebow was yelling at yep. Stephen A. Smith, angry because he wants it Alabama in the final four. And he said that committee members don't have the fortitude right. to make the right call. Eighty eight percent of the audience feels like he wanted to say balls. Do you believe Dante Jones' story? Guys never happened before. What are you talking about? This is never, ever, ever in the history of polls, in the history of this uh, show. Polls on this show, this has never happened before. Wait, are you about to say something? What happened? Are you? You can't possibly. 50 50. No! What? No! 50 50. No, there's not. 50% of the people believe them, 50% of the people don't. I'm trying to scan my brain. Yeah, that's, that's never happened. I can't remember it happening. Which two teams should Dan pick? Uh, oh, I got to check this out. There's a lot of stuff here. 21% of the audience said the Browns, so they're in first place. Are you? Uh, are these your official no, picks? My, I feel like you said that earlier. No, I said I no. Did. Should we reach out to Sarah Spain and see if he's <laughs> <Yeah>. sick? <laughs> you sure you didn't say that earlier? I'm positive. You crowdsourced. Guillermo asked, I mean, and I said You did no. lose a Hall of Fame vote this exact same way. Yes, I did. I learned it's my lesson. I'll never do it again. 21% Browns, 10% Jaguars. I said it's a reputation thing. I'm going to go ahead and select as my final answer. This is official now. This is official, yes. My okay. two-team parlay in so this. So Browns and who else? It's going to be the Chargers. Oh, the Browns and Chargers. They play each they other. They play each other. Oh. That's problematic. <laughs> you lost. Sorry. All right. Zardos. That's, that's too bad. Is that the rest of the polls? Is that all of them? Well, you need to make your picks. Yeah, we do. No, sorry. Stugatz sorry. Is, sorry. I got too, man, Stugatz Mike, is too busy making jokes. Uh, maybe I'll never make the picks. Stugatz is too busy making jokes. Well, then you're stuck with what the audience picks for you. At Levitard Show on Twitter. What else we got? Is that it? Yeah, we're done. Uh, Stugatz is very excited about the way Tiger Woods is playing. Hoof! He's twirling the club. He is hitting the ball. You know, the first hole today, long par four, he drove it 355 yards, and then he birdied the hole. And then hitting into a par five, he hit a beautiful iron shot, and he twirled the club. And I am telling you, Tiger's back. Because these are signs that Tiger is back. Twirling of the club, drives over 350 yards, and he just looks confident. And it's the old Tiger swing, and I'm very excited. I'm going to go home and watch it today. Guillermo, put it on the poll, please. Is the twirling of the club the signal that Tiger Woods is officially back? Yes or no? At Levitard Show. Don Levitard. It's Friday. I'm getting into the weekend. I want to get my drink on. Stugatz. We've got to open up the club. Open it. Open it. 
open it now. What is the computer buffering? There it is. This is the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. Tiger Woods has not won a major in nine years, and basically he left the sport in some form or another nine years ago in that respect because right. he was measured by majors. So when Tiger Woods left, he took golf with him. Uh, he did. I mean, not from me, but from, yes, right, from, from the casual no, fan. From, yes. from, no, he took what t- Tiger Woods is a transcendent figure. He is not a golfer. He is someone who elevates golf. And when he doesn't play well, right. golf is diminished. Of course. And, and interest in golf is down. That is the height of star power. And we have been rooting. Everybody's been rooting for him to complete the story, to be LeBron James, go from famous to infamous to more famous. Right. To make this a positive sports story at the end because it shows all the demons and the the challenges of adulthood and you get to the other side and you're still a winner. He's still, golf affords him that opportunity in a way no other sport does. And I'm hopeful that he'll do it. I think that he'll actually do it. But it's it's been interesting to see like the young guys on tour. Who, if Tiger gets back to being Tiger, they would be affected, both from a money standpoint, championship standpoint, but it's Spieth, and it's Dustin Johnson, and it's Ricky Fowler. It's all these guys saying, white guys, white, 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 white. that we want this guy back. And because it makes golf more exciting, more eyeballs, more people paying attention, and the purses are bigger. And so it's it's been, and it's those guys, them playing with Tiger and telling the world, hey, we're telling you this is different. He is back. Well, that's why well, I think he's back. Well, well, one of the things that I like about it, one, well, no, that's not why you think he's back. You were saying this was an actual conversation that took place during the break. Yeah. Stugatz was saying he's twir- he's twirling his, t- his club, guys. He's twirling his club. And uh, Chris and Billy said he was doing that a year and two years ago. Yeah. And Stugatz countered with, it's different this time. It is. The state- way he's twirling his club, is di- it looks different. It's a statement twirl. It's a sw- That's exactly what was happening during the break. That was the- Stugatz's analysis on the whole Tiger Woods He's back. situation. It'd be great if he was, but what's great to watch is that many of us have been around long enough to watch this become, hey, here's Tiger Woods chasing Jack Nicklaus, and now Tiger Woods is Jack Nicklaus, <laughs> and Fowler's and Spieth's and all these guys, right. they're Tiger Woods. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yes, he's yes. now the veteran, the elder statesman, the guy who hasn't done it, the guy with the bad back, just like Nicholas, the guy who was looking to win in his forties. Like that, Nicholas's uh, fame, much of it came because of what he did. Tiger's age. You know what I mean? Like he did well, a lot. I of, mean, he won. He won he the won Masters more, no, at the age of forty-six. Right. But what I'm saying yeah. is, he was doing. He's got the chance. Tiger's got the chance. After his father, Earl Woods, predicted this number of majors, predicted the prophecy. And and all of the stuff that he's still got the chance if he if surgery and science can get him back out there playing the way that he used to play. Well, he's forty, right? Forty, forty one. So he's got. I mean, Dan Phil Mickelson just won majors. He's won majors well, recently at the age of forty four, forty five. Golf affords so. you the ability, the fountain of youth that no other sport does. None. Let's open up the club for the weekend. Yeah. Send you into the weekend. Let's go. Yep. We used to be an afternoon show, and so this would be a happy hour thing. We'd be sending you in at 7 o'clock at night, like just catapulting you face first into a pool full of alcohol. Correct. But now it's 9.51 a.m. Yep, you're headed to work in L.A. On the West Coast, Mm -hmm. and we are opening up the nightclub. But it's Miami. We do things around here like that. There are clubs in Miami right now that are wide open and filled with booze and drugs and sex. (laughs) Let's see what is the first sound in this week's club. Part of his process is asking my brother and I who we think will be in. Well, that's true. <laughs> I mimeograph my... Oh, wait, we're off the air now? <laughs> There's Greg Cody, professional broadcaster Greg Cody. Sadly, that's him sober. That is I, him. Oh, wait, we're off the air now? <laughs> totally sober. Who else is in the club? Mortensen. Ah. <laughs> that, of course, is the late Al Davis. Uh, Mortensen. Com- coming after uh, Chris Mortensen on microfiche. Mortensen. <laughs> microfiche will make me laugh. Yeah, it's a funny word. Who else is in the club? You know, hard day to handle this, but... Uh... 
Oh, that's Geno Smith in the background as Eli, Ma- Eli Manning cries and weeps and blubbers. That's Geno Smith deep, deep in the background celebrating that the New York Giants are now his. You know, hard day to handle this, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> who else in the club? I'm going to announce all the first team all ACC recipients. Okay, we got Michael Badgley. That's it. <laughs> That's uh, Mark Rick trying to get his University of Miami team fired up because nobody on his team is on the ACC. <laughs> That's it. That's it. I think he'd be more prepared. One, one guy. That's it. One guy. That's it. <laughs> Who else is in the club? I'm so angry right now. i got to move on. Oh, that is the investigation that Urban Meyer wants into the cameraman who injured his national title hopes. Too many damn people on the sideline, and a guy with a camera <laughs> hit, his in the, hit him in the knee. I'm going to find out who. <laughs> I'm going to find out who is such a great sentence. Blowhard. Such a great blowhard sentence. If you told me right now, uh, no other information, Hollywood screenplay, Urban Meyer's got a new film coming out. I'm going to find out who. <laughs> Too many damn people on the sideline. And a guy with a camera hit, his in the, hit him in the knee. I'm going to find out who. I'm going to find out who. I'm waiting in line. Starring for Urban yeah. Meyer. I mean, it'd be bigger than Lady Bird. <laughs> who else is in the club? It's Larry Bird. A, keep his streak alive. B, maybe he plays the whole game. And, you know, C, it kind of prolongs that streak. <laughs> damn. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite moments of the week. Point A and point C are the same in Stugatz's three-pronged Eli Manning take. A, keep his streak alive. B, maybe he plays the whole game. And, you know, C, it kind of prolongs that streak. <laughs> I needed a C. I couldn't find it. <laughs> you needed a C, so you went back to A. B was too soon. They I just said it. You can never stop at B. It's gotta be a you C. needed a C. Who no. else is in the club? With all due respect to Stugatz, I thought he missed the mark entirely. Yeah, there it is. We should uh, put yeah. that on uh, on it on Stugatz's tombstone. With all due respect, stick to reporting. Who else is in the club? Is that Sonny and Cher? <laughs> uh, I got you, babe. <laughs> Who's the best dude down there doing weather or do that? He knows some weather people. Collaborate. Who was that? <laughs>